Hey guys, now what we're going to do is relate work and the kinetic energy that we talked about at the very, very beginning of this unit. So this is going to start with a huge derivation, how we can relate these two equations. So one form of energy is the energy of motion, with, which is our kinetic energy. Ke is one half mv squared. So we're going to make that equation or use that equation and try to relate it to our work one. When we see a constant net force acting on an object, that force does work, and it gives us this new equation that we saw last video, work equals force times distance. The first substitution we're going to be doing is replacing force with mass times acceleration. So work equals mass times acceleration times distance. Now we're going to take this next equation, which is one of our kinematics equations from a couple units ago, and we're going to rearrange it to solve for acceleration. So I'm going to do that over on the left, just so we have some extra space on the right. So Vf squared, our first step, we're going to subtract over this Vi squared, minus Vi squared equals 2 times A times D. Our next step, we're going to divide by 2 times D, so these can all cancel out, and then this side is divided by 2 times D. So now we have A equals Vf squared minus Vi squared over 2 times distance. So again, we just did that rearranging, so we can now take this substance, or this value, and substitute it in for the A in this equation. So work equals mass times acceleration times distance. We are now going to do mass times Vf squared minus Vi squared over 2d times distance. And now, I'm going to do this in a different color, we can cancel out the two distances because one's on the bottom of a fraction and one's on the top. Our next step, I'm going to distribute this m into the parentheses. I'm doing that simply for housekeeping reasons. So I have work equals m times vf squared minus m times vi squared, all over 2. Now I hate big fraction bars, so what I'm going to end up doing is pulling this divided by 2 out and just making it a 1 half, because that makes my life a little bit easier. So work equals 1 half m vf squared minus 1 half m vi squared. Okay, so we took work equals force times distance, we substituted mass times acceleration in for force, we rearranged this kinematics equation to solve for acceleration and substituted that in, and then we simply distributed out the different mathematic symbols. So now we're at w equals 1 half mvf squared minus 1 half mvi squared. Now look, this looks just like this kinetic energy equation. The only difference is I have a little final and I have a little initial. So I can rewrite this as work equals the change in kinetic energy because it's my final kinetic energy minus my initial kinetic energy. So that's how these two ideas are related. If we apply work, our kinetic energy changes. We can speed up, we can slow down. Somehow the motion or the movement of that object has been adjusted. So really we're going to focus on this equation because I'm never just going to give you the difference in kinetic energy. I'm going to force you to solve for something. So this is the main equation you want to make sure you have starred or highlighted on your page. So to summarize, if the net work done on an object is positive, then the kinetic energy increases, meaning you're speeding up or moving faster. If the net work done is negative, the kinetic energy decreases. You are slowing down or coming to a stop. If the net work on an object is zero, the kinetic energy remains constant, which means that velocity also remains constant. You are not speeding up or slowing down at all. So here's our first practice problem. A crane pulls a 500 kilogram box a distance of 12 meters using a force of 255.2 newtons. The box moves from rest to a speed of 3.5 meters per second. Calculate the work done by the crane. So work equals force parallel times distance. And they tell me the force required, 255.2 newtons. They tell me a distance of 12 meters, so my work is a big fat question mark. 
So we're going back to the previous video for the equation because all they are asking for is the work done. So work is 255.2 times 12, and that gives us a value of 3062.4 joules. Now it's asking us to calculate the change in kinetic energy. So that entire second half of that equation was the change in kinetic energy. So I need the mass, which is 500. I need the initial velocity, which is 0. And I need the final velocity, which is 3.5. I know the initial velocity is 0 because it specifically says that it moves from rest. And rest means it's not moving. So change in kinetic energy equals 1 half mvf squared minus 1 half mvi squared. I can cross off this last section because my VI is zero. So change in kinetic energy is one half times 500 times 3.5 squared. And our change in kinetic energy is 3062.5 joules. So we're simply 0.1 joules off. That's close enough that we can say that they're the same. That is something that could happen due to rounding or cutting off a number somewhere. So these are the same, which should work because of that theorem that we just created or just solved for. Now one last practice problem for us to use that big equation that I showed you to star a couple slides ago. A 1500 kilogram car accelerates from rest to a speed of 25 meters per second over a distance of 45 meters. What is the net force applied to the car? So we're going to use work equals change in kinetic energy but I'm actually going to substitute our force parallel times distance equals 1 half mvf squared minus 1 half mvi squared. Because I didn't give you work and I didn't give you change in kinetic energy, we have to solve for them. So force, distance, mass, vf, vi. My force is my question mark. The distance is 45 meters. The mass is 1,500, VF is 25 meters per second, and VI is zero. So I'm going to plug in my numbers. And I'm not going to write the second half of the equation because the VI, again, is zero. So I have 45 times force parallel equals... 468,750. Now I simply have to divide out the 45. And my force parallel is 10,416.67 newtons. So it took 10,000 newtons of force for that car to accelerate from 0 to 25 over that 45 meter distance. So we are going to apply this in class. We're going to work with the work and kinetic energy theorem and see how they relate in practice and worksheets. So I'll see you tomorrow so we can do that.